In this video, we're going to be talking about how to organize your MailChimp audience. There are three options for doing this, tags, segments, and groups. Tags are labels you create to organize your contacts. Tagging lets you structure your contacts and label them based on data you know about them. Tags are highly customizable, so you can create and assign them as you see fit. You can create tags from the contact table. So if we go to all contacts, and then manage contacts and then tags, we can create a tag here. Let's call it test tag. Okay, there's test tag. Uh, contacts profile, so if we go into a contact, click manage tags there, and we can edit the tags again. All the tags played within your audience. So if we go to all contacts, we can select a few contacts, do add or remove tags, and then manage tags, and we can create a tag from there as well. Finally, if you create a landing page with a sign-up form, you can tag contacts who sign up through that page. You can also import contacts and add a tag to your entire import or tag when you add a single subscriber. Tags you've added to contacts display on the overall contact table. So here we go, there's the tags. There we could, for example, assign a tag. Let's add a tag to, let's add a test tag to those. You see test tag is added. And we could filter by tag. So let's say filter by tag so you can, we can select contacts that only have a particular tag. So let's just choose test tag. And you see we've only got three um, contacts in it. Tags can be used in your reporting and also by, for, to help you segment your audience so you can send a campaign to them. So for example, if we go to the audience dashboard, you can see that we've got the most popular tags here and then we can target the campaign those items with this Vendor Lab tag. A segment is a way to create a target audience based on shared data. You can build a segment of your contacts based on location, tag data, group members, sign-up source, email activity, and lots more. You can send customized email, SMSs, ads, or web pages to just contacts in a segment. When you create a segment, you set conditions to filter contacts based on the information available to your audience. Each segment can be defined by up to five conditions. Depending on the segment's logic, only one or all conditions must be met. So we access segments from the left-hand column here. When in MailChimp, you can use a predefined segment, and they've got some up here. For example, you could use potential customers. These are people that you have in your list but haven't placed an order in your store. Let's just view that. So you can see purchase activity has not purchased, and review segment, and then it's asking us to save the segment. And it comes up with a list of customers, and then you could then use that segment to send a campaign. Or we can create our own segment. So if we do create segment, let's just do, for example, a tag. Contact is tagged with, should we say, Vendab in this case. And then we can add a second condition that could be purchase activity has purchased, has not purchased. Let's add a third filter. And let's do sign up source was API generic. Yes. Any IP key. So that's people who come from the API. And then we can review that segment. And let's give that segment a test segment. And review the segment. And there's 200 contacts in this segment. If we click use segment, that'll then save that segment. And we could then use that segment to send a campaign. Final option for organizing your contact is groups. Groups are used to sort subscribe contacts based on their interests and preferences. Groups function like categories and are a good way to manage a large number of contacts in a single main shop audience. Groups can form the basis for building audience segments for sending to targeted audiences. When you create an audience group, you can either add subscribe contacts to group manually or ask them to choose their groups by showing group options on your signup form. So if we go to manage contacts, and then groups, that's from the all contacts menu. We can then create a group. And then it's asking us how we want to show the group on the signup form. So I'm going to check, check as checkboxes there. And then we're going to say test. It's going to ask us for a name for this group category. And then we're going to give the group names as test one, test two, and test three. And then save. And let's say done for now. And there we have our groups. And now if we go into manage our contacts, we can then 
add these contacts to a group or remove from a group. So now these groups are used in the subscriber preferences. So let's click on subscriber preferences in the left-hand side and we can see the vendlab.com preferences center. This can be sent out to customers to ask them for more information about their, their email preferences. Let's edit that. And you can see this is the page that they will see. And at the bottom, it has the options that we've, the groups we've given them. If you get customers to answer the information about their email preferences, then you can use this to segment them and send them more targeted campaigns. Group preferences appears in the footer of your email. So at the bottom here, we have the email and you've got, you can update your preferences. And if we click on that, then it would take them to this preference form and they can update their information, including the preferences you have set.